Today on the channel, we're not talking about a symphony of destruction. We're talking about a symphony of horror with NECA Ultimate Nosferatu. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! the channel for another NECA Ultimate unboxing and review and today on the channel we got something extra special as we've got Nosferatu but for all your Nosferatu needs make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth use discount code Kyle save yourself 10% all in-stock items anything over $79 does ship free gotta get a deal out there and Nosferatu in all timer as we just recently unboxed Nosferatu from Super 7 on the channel so it'll be interesting to compare the two versions Super 7 versus NECA so check out that Super 7 unboxing uh, after you watch this video I guess who knows but the NECA one gonna be an interesting one here uh, I'm excited for this one and I've always said it uh, Nosferatu is an interesting one obviously we're going way back in the day to silent films uh, an interesting look and still all these years later a very creepy film and a very creepy vampire something different than the Bela Lugosi or the Christopher Lee type vampires almost a little bit more monstrous is what he always kind of felt like to me even though he was around people around the time where it seemed like some vampires over the years kind of hide in the shadows but I guess Bela Lugosi was out in front of the people so was Christopher Lee but they looked normal like a human Nosferatu not so much not so much but of course we're gonna do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel we're gonna take a look at the packaging we're gonna talk about it we're gonna unbox it we're gonna talk about it we're gonna see where it goes from there so without further ado let's see what old Nosferatu's up to here looking very skittish on the front cover here we got Nosferatu in the red kind of creepy lettering there and it does say a symphony of horror not a destruction like a young Dave Mustaine but of horror here and very interesting very uh low maintenance but very creepy is what the front looks like there's not a lot of bells and whistles here it's letting old max shrek nosferatu himself doing all the talking on the packaging design on the side he's coming after you he's getting those hands they're getting closer and closer got a little of that going on and then over here he's looking like a young a young Danhausen. Oh, Danhausen took a lot of his stick, of course, from the Nosferatu. As you see it right there, how he holds his hands, even that little hat and kind of robe thing. There's always a nod to the past in almost everything. Everything's kind of been done. It's all being rehashed once again, uh, you could say. Then on the back, Glamour Shot City. It's all about the Glamour Shot on the back. It's all about the Symphony of Horror. A very interesting one. And then, of course, inside the package, we know all about this. We got the flap, glamour shot, and then look at all that action adventure inside there in the bubble. A lot going on inside the packaging here. A very good looking figure as far as I'm concerned, uh, from the outside at least. We'll see what the inside looks like, and there's the old plastic prison here. Now we got a lot of twist ties, gonna take this offline. Get to get him out, and we'll be back talking all things Nosferatu. All right, we got Nosferatu out of the package. Let's get down to business. Let's dive in here. Let's dive in with the accessories first. And we're going to start with the hands. Let's give Nosferatu a hand. Don't give him your neck. Give him a hand here. But you do got the creepy splayed out hands going on. Those long, long fingernails. Absolutely wild there. Man, get those things trimmed up. But the long, creepy fingernails looking interesting there. We do get two gripping hands, pretty much on point. You got two just plain old gripping hands here. Shorter nails on this one than the other one. And then the big old short nails over on the side right out of the package. No fists of fury for Nosferatu. He lets his teeth do the talking, I guess. And then we do get another gripping hand and a little bit splayed out, not as deep of a splayed out hand over here. So we do got a few different hands going on. And then we get down to some interesting accessories. We do get a quill and a ink pad, ink pen uh, little set here. And of course, you guys know I have a book coming out. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Jack's Class Superstars It's a book. It'll be uh, sold where all your fine books are sold and things like that. But I'm thinking if somebody by chance wants an autographed copy, I'm going to get the old quill and ink pen out. I'm going to get there. I'm going to do a little of that. I'm going to do it real official with uh, one of these. A very old timey, very on brand for Nosferatu back in the day. A simpler time and a little harder time to get your uh, John Hancock on signing things but an interesting one no doubt about it and then of course you gotta have something to sign got a little poster here 
Can't really make out anything on this sheet, but obviously he's going to be slaving away, writing the war and peace on a piece of paper, if need be. Now, of course, Nosferatu, the movie, really a, a movie about real estate, really, at the end of the day, for those that do know. But you do got the keys, the keys to my heart, like a young Judas Priest, Rob Halford. But you do got all these skeleton keys going on here. Looking a little bit like a young Jeff George, once the Cat Slayer finally ships, he's going to have a bunch of keys to Thundera, just like this. So it'll be an interesting time when Jeff gets his Thundercats uh, Cat Slayer. More on that in the future. That could be an all-timer. Stay tuned for that. And then we do get this final piece that I have no idea what this even is. Is this a bong? Is this uh, some kind of special thing? I don't even know what this is. I can't even place what it is. It almost looks like a vase. Uh, it almost looks like uh, something you'd blow into. No idea. You guys shout it out in the comments what exactly that is. I don't know. But now we're getting down to the heads here. We're going to start with the head that comes on Nosferatu out of the package. Once again, looking awfully a lot like Gargamel. Oh, Gargamel, one of the evilest villains of all time. Just ready to cook them Smurfs up at a moment's notice. Don't forget about his cat, Azriel, as well. Uh, but I got to think Gargamel was somewhat based off of Nosferatu in a little ways. But definitely looking like Gargamel with that hair over the ears. Got those pointy ears as well. Those big old caterpillars as uh, eyebrows up there looking good. And then, man, those eyes. The darkness behind those eyes. This is a guy that hasn't sleep, slept in a long, long time. Got those kind of buck teeth going on as well. That was one of the cool things about Nosferatu where Bela Lugosi, who came after, uh, arguably the most famous Dracula of all time, he never showed fangs. We got a little kind of fangs with him. It always looked a little creepy in the face department for old Nosferatu here. Looking very dangerous. Looking very dangerous. Uh, and then, of course, uh, bald head across the top as well. So really on brand. Somebody hands me this. I know who this is at the end of the day. Now, the second head sculpt here, you get a little smiling face. You get a little of that Todd McFarlane from the couch side eye going on. He's giving me one of those off to the side. He's looking off. He's looking for trouble. You never know what he might be up to. But big old side eye there. And then the third and final head. Oh, he's just uh, petrified. It's like he, he smelled something he didn't like or something. I don't know. But he's got kind of an angry, mad face here. Just a disappointed face on him as well. So that's interesting. Now, we do get the hat. And this is where we get a little Danhausen effect with this one as well. I don't know what you technically call this hat. It almost reminds me of a chef's hat in some ways. Uh, but it's an interesting hat, no doubt about it. But you got that. And, of course, it can work on any of the heads here. I'm sure there's... Probably some heads like this one, a little bit better, fit a little tighter on there. Almost looks like a big old shower cap, and it almost looks like that hat uh, Nikolai Volkov used to wear back in the 80s. Uh, but it's not furry. Uh, but an interesting hat here, but on brand. On brand with the character as well. Now we dive into Nosferatu here. He's got that big old overcoat going on. That big old overcoat looking good. Getting down to the hands we talked about. Very creepy. Kind of that gray skin tone. A little bit of arch in those fingers making him look scary. And then not quite as long of fingernails as some of these ones here. But you got a little bit of length on these as well. Very white tipped fingernails. Looking creepy. If you guys saw this guy at a bar one night, you'd say there's something off with that guy in the corner. Somebody call the authorities. That's probably what people would say there. Uh, but looking interesting in this old timey coat. And then you got kind of jeans, I guess is what it really looks like. But the black pants going on down to the black shoes. Old timey shoes once again. Arm does go all the way around. You do get a uh, bend at the elbow, no bicep cut. You do get a side to side at the elbow as well. Hands, rubble, back force, side to side. Little bit of waist, really blocked by the coat, no ab crunch, nothing like that. Head removable, side to side, up and down. A lot of down, not so much up, not so much side to side because of the collar on the coat. Then you get barely any splits for a vampire. Vampire should be able to do the splits real good, not Nosferatu. A little bit of bend there, once again blocked by the coat. Bend at the knee, side to side, ankle side to side, up and down. A little bit of movement there as well. Now, is he going to fit on a Mattel ringside collectible stand? As usual, use discount code Kyle, save 10% at ringside collectibles. What do you know? Fits perfectly on a stand right there, so we do like that. But an interesting one here. Now, I did mention earlier, we did unbox the Super 7 edition a week, two weeks ago. What is time, as we always do say? And I do have that here. Now, this is the black and white edition. There is a colored version coming from Super 7, so we'll cross that bridge when it does come. I thought this was supposed to be the black and white version as well, and I guess it kind of is, but kind of isn't, as it's not black and white in the coat department and things like that, so it definitely does feel a little bit different. Uh, but very similar style figures here. Um, just a little bit more detail on the NECA one, I would say, here. And I think that's kind of the buying power and the cost and all that that goes into these. NECA, obviously a bigger company than Super 7. Uh, a lot more money involved, so the cost of the units goes a little bit more. 
paying $55 for the Super 7, you're paying $36 for NECA. That's that price difference, quality difference between the two. This Super 7 version almost reminds me of kind of a comic book uh, artist piece, something like that, where this is maybe more movie specific in some ways. There is things I like about both figures here. I do like the gritty, dark nature of the head sculpt on this one, where this one uh, feels like a movie. It feels like it, but it doesn't feel like it's been grittied up. This one feels like it could be in the movie, but it was a little bit more gritty added to it. Maybe that's just my opinion there. I do like both figures for what they are, but I have to imagine most people are going to say, hey, I'm going to go the NECA route. It's going to be easier for me to get. It's at stores as we speak. Uh, it's a cheaper price point. So I can see more people jumping into the NECA one than possibly the Super 7 ones. But of course, hardcore Nosferatu fans, we see them all the time, repping Nosferatu in their t-shirts, things like that every single day. They're probably getting both of these. They'll probably get the color version. And I can't remember, I'll have to look into it, but is there another NECA version coming, a true black? and white one uh, i guess we'll wait and see on that one here but there's not a ton of meat on the bone for old nosferatu not sure we're going to get really any figures outside of the other super 7 one we'll see what happens it's not like there's any other iconic real characters in the movie that we need to bring out in action figure form but it is kind of what it is gonna fit good for me personally it's technically not a universal monster but i'll have him kind of mixed in the bunch of those guys i think when i do put him on my display so that's kind of my plan at least but i'd be interested to hear your thoughts and your plan for this figure you get neither of them, you pass it on both of them. Let me know your thoughts on old Nosferatu and your plans for collecting this line or lines. Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. So we got videos every single day and then some. We got even more content for you, of course, over on Patreon. Patreon, the best way to support this very YouTube channel and all the content it does bring. Of course, Patreon is a great place for bonus videos and early access. You name it, it's all over there on the old Patreon channel. And thank you guys once once again, for supporting the channel. You can also support the channel for us at tease.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for Nosferatu, I'm Kyle. See you all real soon.